In this video, I'm going to do an example of absolute and comparative advantage. It's going to be very similar to the one that you had for homework. And I'm assuming, before watching this video, that you did all the preparation work. You read the selected pages in the chapter and utilized the other resources on the website. So you have some understanding already of what absolute and comparative advantage is as it applies to international trade. What we're going to look at now is a, a, a variation of the production possibilities frontier. We're going to look at the production possibilities frontier for two countries, country A and country B. We're going to keep it simple, and we we'll are assume that they only can produce two commodities, corn and wheat, with their resource endowments, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. Let's look at country A first. Uh, given, uh, country A, given their resource endowment, if they allocate all their scarce resources to the production of corn, they can produce 60 bushels of corn. Or, if they allocate all their scarce resources towards the production of wheat, they can produce 60 bundles of wheat. So these are the two extreme points. If we connect those points, we're going to have a straight line, constant cost, production possibilities frontier. Just connecting the points, which means that country A can produce any bundle of corn and wheat, assuming productive efficiency, along this constant cost, production possibilities frontier. Let's assume that right now, that they're not trading with anybody else, country B or anybody else, and they're just producing for domestic consumption. And let's assume that they just split the difference. They make the allocative efficiency decision to produce 30 bushels of corn and 30 bushels of wheat. So they're producing right here on their production possibilities frontier, productive efficiency, and this bundle of corn and wheat is an allocative efficiency decision. Country B, same thing. All of their resources towards the production of corn, 40 bushels of corn. All their resources towards the production of wheat, 80 bushels of wheat. Connect those two extreme points, and we have a straight line, constant cost, production possibilities frontier. They make the allocative efficiency decision to produce 20 bushels of corn and 40 bushels of wheat. Now, both countries are not, they have, they're not trading, they're in closed economies. Okay, they're in a state of what's called autarky. Autarky, kind of a funny word, spelled A U T A R. KY. Closed economies, they're not trading with anybody else. Now, we want to look at each country or step back and look at each country and ask the first two questions. First two questions. First question is, who has the absolute advantage or who can absolutely produce more corn given their resource endowment? Well, just look at the numbers. Country A can produce 60, country B 40. So country A has the absolute advantage in the production of Corn, okay? Easy, piece of cake. That's the first question. All right, now we want to look at and ask the question, who has the absolute advantage in the production of wheat or who can absolutely produce more wheat given their resource endowment? And we see country B has the absolute advantage in the production of wheat. It just happens to work out this way. Numbers could be different in any given example. One country could have the absolute advantage in the production of both, but... Um, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. In this case, uh, we just determined that each country has the absolute advantage in the production of at least one of the goods. Now we want to look at the case of comparative advantage. Comparative advantage. When we look at comparative advantage, we want to look at who can produce a good internally, commodities internally, at the lowest opportunity cost. So which country gives up the least to produce one good? Once we can determine opportunity cost internally. Then we're going to look to see if there's some opportunities for trade between these countries. And the key point is, if there's an opportunity for them to specialize in what they do best, trade with each other, and create the possibility of consuming, not producing, but consuming outside of their production possibilities. This would be a great thing. Given their resources, if they just specialize in the production of one good, come to some what's called terms of trade, trade with each other, and they may be able to consume a higher bundle of corn and wheat than they otherwise would if they just stayed in a closed economy. Okay? So to do that, we have to establish or calculate our, our internal opportunity cost. Now, a fail-safe method, I believe, to get everything right and be able to answer your questions is to set up a graphic organizer similar to this. We have our two countries, country A, country B, on, in this row. All right, then we got some columns here. In the first column, we have our first commodity, corn. And we just take the data from our graph, and we see that country A can produce 60 bundles of corn, country B, 40 bundles, uh, bushels of corn. 
Over here, we'll skip this block for right now. Over here, we have our commodity wheat, and just plug in your daddy, data. Daddy? Data. <laughs> All right? 60 bushels of wheat for country A, 80 bushels of wheat for country B. All right? Now, to calculate our opportunity costs, we want to set these numbers uh, in a ratio. Set them in a ratio to each other. And then we want to simplify that ratio. So we have 60 bushels of corn, and we set that to 60 bushels of wheat. Just a simple ratio. Then we simplify it, and we find that for country A, to get one bushel of corn, they have to give up one bushel of wheat. Yeah, that's easy to see. The numbers are the same. Just a one-to-one -one trade off to get one bushel of corn, it's going to cost them uh, a bushel of wheat. For country B, okay, do the same thing. We set corn to wheat, simplify the ratio, and for country B, the opportunity cost of producing corn is two bushels of wheat. Okay, good information here. Now, let's go over here and look at wheat in terms of corn, the reciprocal. Just reciprocal numbers here when we calculate our opportunity cost. So, we just turn it around. We set 60 bushels of wheat to 60 bu uh, bushels of corn, simplify, and we come up with, lo and behold, numbers are the same, one wheat will cost us one corn. Now, for country B, a little more difficult. Okay, we set those up in a ratio. 80 bushels of wheat set to 40 bushels of corn. Simplify. So for country B, one bushel of wheat is going to cost them a half a corn. All right, big deal, right? Yes, it is a big deal. Now, to see if there's some, advan if there's some uh, advantage to trade here, we want to look at each country's opportunity cost okay, and find out who produces a, the good corn or wheat at the lowest opportunity cost. So let's look over here for corn first. Now, look at these two numbers. Opportunity cost for country A to produce a corn is one wheat. For country B is to produce two wheats. The question we ask, who produces corn at the lowest opportunity cost? Just simply look for the lowest number. Okay? Country A produces it for one wheat. Country B for two wheats. So country A has the advantage the comparative advantage in the production of corn. So the law of comparative advantage suggests that country A should give up what it doesn't do as well relative to country B, okay, and just specialize and produce in what they do best. In this case, it's corn. So country A is going to give up the production of wheat and just produce corn. No wheat in country A, all corn. Now we want to look at country B. What are they good at? What do they produce at the lowest opportunity cost? So we go over here, look at the numbers. One wheat, uh, one corn for country A. One wheat, uh, one wheat for country B, they have to give up half a corn. So who produces at the lowest opportunity cost? Just pick the lowest number. That's going to be country B. So country B has the, abs uh, I'm sorry, the comparative advantage in the production of wheat. Country A has the comparative advantage in the production of corn. So country B is going to specialize in wheat, give up the production of corn. Now, pretty big leap here for each country to do this, okay? somewhat of a leap of faith. But the key here is establishing some terms of trade, some terms of trade, wheat in terms of corn, corn in terms of wheat, that are acceptable to both countries and will allow them to both be better off if they specialize and trade in what they do best uh, for what they don't do, what they don't do best in mutual, the mutual benefits of trade. Now to find out what those terms of trade are, uh, trade are very simple. We want to go back over here, corn, compare the two countries. Okay, we want to pick a, a, a terms of trade, a number anywhere in between these two ratios, anywhere in between these two ratios, and I always try to pick the easiest one. So any number between one corn and one wheat, one corn and two wheats is going to be one corn. Okay, we'll buy 1.5 wheat, bushels of wheat. Okay, a number in between two, one and two. Simple, right? Okay, now if we go over here, the acceptable terms of trade is just going to be reciprocal of this number, and we know that this reciprocal is going to fall in between these two numbers, and if you do the math, you're going to have one wheat will trade for 0.67 corns for 
um, country B, okay, or terms of trade for both of them. Now let's see how this works. Let's see how this works out for both of them. All right, terms of trade, one corn for 1.5 wheat. Country A, okay, they still want to consume domestically 30 bushels of wheat, but since uh, corn, but since they don't produce wheat anymore, they're going to take their surplus 30 bushels of corn, the 30 bushels of corn, and they're going to sell them to country B for the established terms of trade. So each corn for country A, they're going to fetch or they're going to get 1.5 bushels of wheat. So if we do the math, we take 30 bushels of corn times 1.5 wheats, we're going to get 45 wheats. So look at country, uh, country A. They're still going to consume 30 bushels of corn, but they're going to also be able to consume 45 bushels of wheat. Are they better off? Are they better off now that they took up this leap of faith, okay, specializing in what they did best, and traded some of that surplus uh, for, for the rest, for some wheat? Absolutely, yes, they are. Now let's see if this works out for country B2. Now, we already know in advance it's going to work out reciprocal numbers. It should work out to country B's uh, uh, welfare uh, as well. So country B still, they, they produce wheat. Um, they're going to still want to uh, uh, consume domestically 40 bushels of wheat. So they're going to sell 40 bushels of wheat at this price. So if you take 40 bushels of wheat and you multiply it by 0.67 corn, and you're going to get, I believe, about 27 bushels of wheat. I'm sorry, bushels of corn. It's so hard to go back and forth between corn and wheat. All right. So now country V is consuming a bundle of corn and wheat outside of its produ production possibilities frontier. Remember, they're not producing out there, but they're now able to consume past their production possibilities frontier. So has their welfare increased? Are they better off? According to the theory of comparative advantage, yes, they are. They're producing a higher bundle of corn and wheat that they otherwise would if they were a closed economy back in autarky and just producing for themselves. That's it. Um, the only other caveat I would put in there is that Obviously, if the terms of trade fall outside of these, of, of these numbers, outside the parameters of these opportunity costs, if the terms of trade were less than one, if one corn purchased uh, half a wheat, then we know that's outside the parameter. It's not going to work. Or if the terms of trade were one corn for three wheats outside of the terms of trade, and if we did all the math, we could do that. If we did all the math, we'd find out that one or both of these countries would end up being worse off they would be consuming a bundle of corn and wheat inside their production possibilities frontier. So it only works to their mutual benefit if the terms of trade are between the opportunity costs. If you have any questions, please let me know in class. Otherwise, uh, this should be good. It's magic. It'll work out. It's fail-proof. It's fail-proof. You can get most of the questions on my test or the AP test uh, just by doing this, setting this up. Thank you very much.